Hey, Visibility Hackers. This week, we have a very special series designed just for you. We are talking about building your customer avatar. We've got a awesome handout for you guys that will help you walk through this whole process and so much more. So we'll talk about that at the end of today's video, but let's, uh, let's just dive right into it, shall we? Hey, Visibility Hackers, I'm Coach Molly from Visibility Hacking Studios, and today we're talking about building your customer avatar. And I'm really passionate about talking about this because in the visibility hacking world and in our business, the customers that we work with, it's such a joy for us to see that transformation when they start to actually pay attention to focusing on designing that customer avatar, on researching that customer avatar, because it's kind of like if you're going on a journey and you're trugging through the forest or whatever, if you're on an adventure, you usually have a map, right? Or at least you know where you're trying to go, where you ultimately want to be, right? But if you don't know where you're going and you don't have a map and you don't really know where you are or what's happening around you, then of course you're not going to be happy with the journey. You might not end up somewhere that you wanna be. You might get stuck, you might get lost or whatever. The same thing applies in our businesses, which is kind of exciting, I think. In my opinion, I think it's exciting. We worked with a client recently who was really far forward in their business. They had been making a fair amount of money, but they were running in circles trying to accomplish all of the tasks uh, that needed to be done in their business. And when we dug into it, we realized that they had no idea who they were trying to market to. And so all of this running around that was happening in their business was simply because they were trying to target absolutely everyone rather than understanding exactly the customer that is going to say yes. They instead were targeting anyone who might be possibly interested in what they had to offer. The downside to doing it this way is that you end up wasting more of your time, spending more of your energy trying to convince someone who might not be the perfect fit. And I'll admit, when Visibility Hacking Studios first started and in previous businesses that I had had before, I wanted to skip over the customer avatar part. I didn't want to pay attention to it. I thought that kind of work behind the scenes was going to stop me from actually making money. I wanted to get going. I wanted to start talking to people and start selling to them and start meeting their needs. But the reality is, Again, like I said, if you don't have a map and you don't have a destination, you're going to get lost. And so with our customers, if we don't understand specifically who we're targeting, we're just wasting money. We're just literally crank open the window and just start throwing your dollar bills out because that's what you're doing if you skip the fundamental steps. If you've been here before, you know that I push the fact that you have to do those fundamentals. They are boring, I know. They are easy to ship off to someone else, but we don't wanna do that because we really wanna dive into connecting with our people in the right way. So enough about that. Let's talk about more things in today's video. So first, we are going to talk about what is a customer avatar to begin with. We want to make sure everyone is on the same page. And then we'll talk about why you need to understand your customer avatar. And then at the end, we will do a walkthrough of a familiar customer avatar so that you can kind of get a feel for what this looks like so you can start applying it to your business because at the very end of this video, you're going to have to stick around for it. I'm going to give you an absolutely free, awesome tool that will really help you drill down. It'll cover what we talk about in today's video. It'll cover what we talk about in the rest of this series. Uh, but you're gonna have to hold on for information on that one. So if you're ready to get started, <laughs> follow me. See you after the intro. <laughs> First 
first things first, let's talk about what a customer avatar is to begin with. A customer avatar is a, it's a piece of paper. It could be a digital file if you want, but fundamentally what we're doing is we are creating a detailed portfolio or a, a detailed uh, brief on who our target customer is. And I know we want to sell to lots of people, of course we're going to, but in order to find the right people, we have to look for commonalities between those, that group of buyers we ultimately are going to be having in our business, right? So we look for those commonalities. Is there a gender that skews more to in, in the people who are going to be purchasing your, your products, your solutions, your, your uh, services, whatever. We also want to look to see um, who, what kind of demographics are there? Are they between a particular age group? Do they have a certain um, college or university level education or maybe not. Uh, what is that? What are those commonalities between all of those potential customers? So yes, this exercise will require you to do a little bit of creative research. And if you're those kind of people that really like to do the market research to talk to customers and you want that to be part of the momentum, then absolutely. So what you're going to do is merge the information that you're gathering when you're getting to know your customers, when you're just chatting with them, when you're learning about what their pain points are and thinking about how you can position yourself as the solution to those problems. And of course, qualifying and disqualifying customers who may or may not be the right fit for you. So customer avatar doing this exercise helps you create the parameters in which you can judge those interactions. Is this a potential lead or is this showing flags that it's not? And it's not as difficult as you think. So think about your potential customer. Let's say uh, we're looking, we're a fitness guru, fitness guru, we're a fitness coach, and we help people very specifically lose weight. If you need more help on really honing down on what it is that you do, let me know down in the comments and we can help you hash that out. Uh, but understanding what it is you do, and now we're gonna talk about who is best served by that solution. So if you're a fitness coach and you help people lose weight, then what we're going to do is think about the customers who definitely definitely need your service. We're going to be dividing potential customers into different tiers. So we're starting with the tier that is probably the smallest group of people, but will be the most excited and the most uh, energized to take on your solution, right? So with those people, I want you to think about what are qualifying and disqualifying factors. So a fitness coach helps people lose weight. We definitely want someone, um, or it'll be easier to sell to someone who maybe has had already had a conversation with their doctor about needing to lose that weight. They already have a motivator behind that. That would be someone in your customer avatar potentially or a different kind of fitness coach who might help people lose weight, but they're working specifically with people who have been diagnosed, let's niche down even more, with uh, type two diabetes, for example. It's a different set of motivators, uh, but it's also uh, helping you understand who your specific customer is. Speaking to, uh, let's say, a, um, an aspiring college athlete who might need to just tone up a little bit more in order to really start performing at their, their highest. Um, they're gonna take on a fitness coach to lose weight for one reason, but our newly diagnosed diabetic is going to be having that different set of motivators. Same ultimate goal, different reasons why we're going at that. That that is, an un, that is, understanding that I should say, helps you see that there's two different messages. You're not going to talk to the college athlete the same way that you're going to talk to the person with diabetes because we have different motivators. We have different pieces of our, our vocabulary. If you start talking about high level athleticism to our type two diabetic, that message isn't necessarily going to resonate. So we wanna make sure that when we're understanding who our customer is, we can really hone down on that right message. So understanding what kinds of things will qualify your potential customer and what kinds of things would disqualify someone who isn't the right fit.
So if you have questions about your customer avatar, of course, I'm always open. I want to know your questions, comments, concerns, or even your knock-knock jokes. Let me know down in the comments below. As per usual, I've already given you a sneak peek on why we need to understand our customer avatar, why it's so important. So in the intro, I was telling you about this customer we had who was totally disaligned, did not understand their customer avatar. They were going after absolutely everyone. That was costing a lot of time, but it was also stopping the, the team from moving forward and targeting that right person so they could really start to scale at a great, great rate. So what we did was we really honed down on who their customer was. We looked for those patterns, like I said, and then we started aligning our messaging. Once you align your messaging appropriately, it may feel a little bit awkward. It may feel really, really weird. Some people have even described it as feeling kind of scripted. Um, but when you do it right, when you align who you are as the leader of that movement with who your ideal customer is and the right messaging that connects the two of those, then you're going to see a much deeper connection. That's when having a connection machine really, really kicks in, but that will, we will save for another day. So I want you to understand how important it is to, un to unlock your customer avatar. To do this kind of work, yeah, it feels boring, but it is so important, absolutely essential because if we go even deeper, understanding your customer avatar not only helps you align those messages like we talked about, but it also helps you use algorithms to your advantage. If you're doing an ad campaign, for example, you need to understand who you are targeting. If you're creating a challenge, you need to understand what are the motivators for that customer? How can you help the algorithm feed that out to more of those same types of people? The algorithm is doing the exact same thing that I just asked you to do, which is to look for those patterns. If you give the algorithm a little bit of that work, it's going to be able to do much, much more for you. So make technology, make things work to your advantage. <laughs> and hey, why not help the channel out here? If you're enjoying this video or any of our videos on this channel, why don't you give this video a thumbs up? Oh, definitely subscribe to the channel because we would love to see you. And of course, you're going to get access to the rest of the customer avatar series and so much more. So hit the subscribe button, join us here on the channel, why don't you? So I promised you guys an over the shoulder customer avatar adventure. So let's talk about what would make a good avatar and what would make a bad avatar. Or I should say, if I was your teacher, would I give you a passing grade for these or would I send it back home so you can redo it? <laughs> First, let's talk about what makes a bad avatar. Or some of the things that I have seen that are just not good and I don't want you to pick up those bad habits. So first things first is to be too general. Uh, being too general looks a little bit like trying to sell water to everyone. If you can't drill down multiple levels of understanding why, you, why your customer needs your product, then you're not doing it right. So what would that look like in a good avatar? I want you to get more specific. I want you to actually ask yourself why this customer needs this product. Why is this a match? And ask yourself that multiple times. Drill down deep, 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 because you're going to get to something more than, well, I sell water to people because they're thirsty. No, why are they thirsty? Is it because they're hiking long distances or is it because they don't have clean water in their areas? Oh, well, well then why is that? And go deeper and deeper and deeper. That will help you get much more specific about your customer. The second thing that I have seen that makes a bad avatar is being too specific. I know, I'm sorry, that's confusing. But if you are too specific about your customer avatar, then you end up only selling to one person. 
month. And I mean, I don't mean that this is the worst thing in the world. I mean, I've definitely, um, definitely supported the, the process of hyper niching down, like actually taking a desired, um, a desired customer, like a real person, maybe when maybe your business is at the stage where you're just getting your first customer for example and you feel like they are the perfect fit you you want to work with them and people just like them perfect that's awesome so what you're going to do is create an avatar based very specifically on them you can even interview your your potential customers or your ideal customers um, and ask them for their input and what they would say and how they would respond to certain questions. Ask them about their demographics and psychographics and, and gather that information. That's a great thing to do, yes, but realize that if you leave it at that, a lot of people do, you're not actually helping build your ideal customer. So I want you to go a little bit broader. If you start out hyper niche down, then I want you to step up a little bit more and try and find other like-minded people, people who are similar to that target customer that you're working with, that you have all this information on. I want you to find a couple more people and then create your final customer avatar it's never actually final, we know this. Create that final customer avatar and, uh, and do it by generalizing what you found between these multiple people. That way, that becomes more of a realistic representation of your, of your ideal customer. Alternatively, if you have like a beta group or a small group that you're already working with or you're in a cool mastermind of people who are the exact people you want to work with, then create um, create your customer avatar based on a, a, a generalization of all of those pre-existing people. Be creative, but recognize the, the importance of having a customer avatar profile in the first place um, is all about creating that roadmap for your algorithms to follow and for your team to follow and for your copywriters to follow, that's for sure. Now I promised you a customer avatar profile worksheet that you can print off and follow along. So it's a few pages long, bear with me. There's a lot we gotta work through, uh, but what you're going to do is follow the link down below. We have it available for you um, absolutely free. Follow that, check it out. We have more training specifically on our customer avatar or worksheets in our Visibility Hacking Facebook group. So when you download uh, the workbook pages, the links are going to be in there, follow along, join us in the group, and we would love to answer any questions you have because you can always join us for Friday Night Live, get your questions answered by our awesome coaches, and so much more. So, see you over there. Until then, remember, I love you, be excellent to each other, and just go live because your people are waiting for you.